Say, why don't you light up an old gold and get ready to laugh? It's time for the Old Gold Comedy Theater. From Hollywood, California, the makers of Old Gold Cigarettes present the Comedy Theater. The only radio program that brings you every week the greatest stars in the greatest comedies. Tonight's play, the radio version of a Frank Ross production, A Lady Takes a Chance, starring Randolph Scott and Gene Tierney. And here is the director of the Old Gold Comedy Theater, Mr. Harold Lloyd. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our play tonight is called A Lady Takes a Chance. With a lot of men uh, playing the male lead, the ladies certainly would be taking a chance. But uh, not in the old gold comedy theater, because our leading man is Randolph Scott. Uh, thanks, Harold, but aren't you exaggerating a little bit? Well, perhaps I am, Randy. Now, look, Harold, you don't have to agree with me so readily. All right. Stop flexing those biceps. They don't impress me. But they do me. Why, Gene Tierney. <laughs> now, in tonight's play, Randy, you're a cowboy. Your name is Duke Hudkins. You're a rodeo performer. The women all love you, but you prefer horses. Who, me? Uh, in the play. <laughs> oh, that's different. <laughs> and you hate matrimony. As for you, Gene, you play the part of Molly Truesdale. When you were a little girl, you were so impressed by the story of Little Red Riding Hood that ever since, you've been afraid of wolves. Just between you and me, Harold, I've got a right to be. Yeah, yes, I can see that. <laughs> anyway, in order to keep the wolves away from your door, you go around with your hair drawn back tight and you wear horn-rimmed glasses. You believe that old saw about men and girls who wear glasses, hmm? <laughs> oh, well, however... <laughs> Uh, as the play opens, you're traveling on a bus to California, where your mother is about to be married for the fourth time. But in Creased Hat, Arizona, the bus breaks down. The repairs will take several hours, and so there being a rodeo in town, and you having nothing else to do, you go to the rodeo. Just as you take your seat, a cowboy is thrown over the barrier right into your lap. Uh, how are you, ma'am? How am I? With a six-foot cowboy. Six-foot-two, ma'am. With a six-foot-two cowboy and weighing 200 pounds. None of it fat. Except between the ears. Get off my lap, you big lunkhead. Oh, I am sitting on your lap at that, ain't I? Have you been having any doubts? Oh, no, ma'am. I've been out with girls before. Well, Next time you're out with a girl, try letting her sit on your lap. It might be fun. Gee, it might as that. Uh, uh, but you ain't sore at me, are you? Am I? He asked me, am I? With thousands of people watching me dandle a cowboy on my knee. I... It's a nice knee, ma'am. Stop noticing my knees and look. Will I have to get Congress to pass a law before you get off my lap? Uh, sorry, ma'am. I'll get off. There. I hope I didn't upset you too much. I didn't fall off that bronc on purpose. You should learn how to ride in private. Hey, learn how to ride? But, ma'am, uh, well, I'm Duke Hudkins, uh, champion cowboy of Arizona. I always thought the general idea in riding a horse was to stay on it. I reckon you don't think I can ride a horse. If you can, what were you doing on my lap? Uh, come here, ma'am. I got to show you something. Just a little closer to this barrier here. Well, all right. Here I am. Mm-hmm. <whistles> This here is my horse, Sammy. Just a second till I get on it. Well, now I know what makes Sammy run. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. Mmm. You got on very nicely. Too bad you can't stay on. Now, ma'am, are you still insinuating I need riding lessons? Hey, you're falling off again. 
No, I'm not. I'm just leaning over so as I can put an arm around your waist. Now, let go. Look, I don't like wolves, not even on horseback. And swing you right up into the saddle. Stop! Stop that! I don't like it up here. You better take a good hold of me, ma'am. I don't like you well enough. What do you think you are going to do? Take you for a ride, ma'am. I don't want to go for a ride. I've got to catch a bus at four o'clock. I'm getting right off. I... My, horses are tall, aren't they? Yep. Not only that. Get Sammy. They travel fast. Stop him! Horses jump fences too, ma'am. Up, Sammy! Ow! All right, ma'am. Here we are in town. Put your arms around my neck. Never mind that. All I want to do is to get off this horse. Well, ma'am, that's the only way I know of getting you off a horse. Oh, all right. And don't call me ma'am. My name's Molly. Yes, ma'am. And my name's Duke. Phew. Back on the good old earth again. Oh, oh, my legs. Mr. Duke Hudkins, I'd enjoy seeing you hanged. I guess it was a little hard on you. Come on, we'll get you a drink. Drink? You said your bus wasn't leaving until four. Ain't much more than two now. Just time to drop in at the last chance saloon and grab a couple of snorts. I'm not in the habit of grabbing snorts. Well, lady, you need something. You ain't no condition to board that bus. The last chance, huh? Well, all right. I'll take a chance. Lead on, cowboy. But lead slow. <laughs> Now, here's Bob Williams, who tells you how to handle a drip. Uh, Look, friends, when you're trying to go to sleep and the bathroom faucet goes, "Mm, mm, mm, mm," drip, 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 don't call in the janitor and flood him with complaints. After all, why be irritated? Light an old gold. Ah, yes, smokers, you sure turn on lots of comfort and pleasure when you light a fine cigarette, especially today. But listen... You get no pleasure if your cigarette is hot, harsh, and dry. That's why... To help prevent cigarette dryness, Old Golds are conditioned with a special moisture-protecting agent we call apple honey, made from the juice of fresh apples. In addition, Old Gold's unique blend of many choice tobaccos is enriched with rare imported Latakia tobacco for delightful extra flavor. Extra flavor plus extra protection against cigarette dryness. That's old gold. Say, as soon as you can, try a pack. And look, when some little drip drops in and bothers you, why be irritated? Light an old gold. And now back to Harold Lloyd in the second act of tonight's Old Gold Comedy Theater presentation, A Lady Takes a Chance, starring Gene Tierney and Randolph Scott. All right, Mr. Lloyd. Well, Molly certainly has had a dull afternoon. Absolutely nothing has happened to her except having her bus break down, a cowboy fall in her lap, being taken for a ride that shouldn't happen to Paul Revere, and right now end up in Creased Hat, Arizona's Last Chance Saloon. Where you been? Hi, Waco. Oh, Waco, I want you to meet Molly. Uh, Molly, Waco's my best pal. Hello, Waco. Hi. Waco, why were you named Waco? Because she's born in Amarillo. <coughs> she, uh, you're the girl Duke fell on? Don't remind me. As soon as I get my strength back, I'm going to start hating that cowboy. Hating him? <laughs> That'll sure be a new experience for Duke. <laughs> Hiya, Duke. Hi, Peg. This must be an old experience. There is going to be a moon tonight, Duke. How's about going for a little ride in the moonlight? I don't know. Uh, Sounds like it might be interesting for a short run. Well, come on over here and let's us have a little talk about it. Uh, What's there to talk about? You see what I mean, Molly? Prettiest gals in town fell for him. I guess you ain't got much of a chance with them there glasses and that there hair. Mr. Waco, I don't want a chance or anything else to do with Mr. Duke Hudkins. Oh? All I want is to get on my bus and forget all about Creased Hat, Arizona. But fast. Now, let's get that drink. Hey, Monk. Monk. Yeah, coming in a minute. Hold your horses. Horses. Yep, yep, horses. That's why girls ain't got much of a chance with the Duke. He likes horses better. Yep, that's me. 
gal with a pretty face and, and things can have me for a short run, but I don't like to be fenced in. Well, what'll it be, folks? Irish for me. Beer, Monk. Uh, what did you have, Molly? Whiskey? No. A glass of milk. Oh. <laughs> milk she wants. Mother, I want a glass of milk. Uh, <laughs> look, look, lady, nobody drinks milk. How about a shot of gin? Milk. That's for babies. Beer, maybe? Milk. Uh, that's that white stuff, ain't it? <laughs> I want milk. You want... Lady, you are the honorist, most cantankerous... That... I want milk. Okay, okay. You want milk. Uh, uh, now, look, Molly. Monk don't carry no regular cow milk, but he could let you have a glass of cactus milk. Couldn't you, Monk? Uh, uh, cactus milk? Uh, yeah, but I... The nectar of the West, ain't it? Oh, but Duke... If the lady wants milk... The lady wants milk. One cactus milk for the lady, Monk. Oh, all right, but the house ain't responsible. I don't know. <laughs> what did he say? Uh, he says this year house is respectable. Oh. <laughs> I see. Well, tell me, just how do they milk a cactus? With steel gloves, ma'am. <laughs> Yes, sirree, Bob. I'll tell you, at four o'clock in the morning while the cactus is asleep. While they're asleep? Oh, yes. You see, ma'am, cactuses don't like to be milked. Waco, I think you're lying. Why, ma'am, whatever makes you think that? Yeah, here you are. One Irish, one beer, and here's your cactus milk, lady. Thanks. Come on, Molly, drink it down. Monk, get out of here. Uh-uh, I gotta see what happened. <laughs> Say, this milk has a wonderful taste. You like it, huh? Well, stay with it, Molly. I sure will. In fact, I think I'll have another one. Uh, another one? <laughs> sure. Milk's good for you. Uh, look, lady, ain't been no one asked for a second cactus milk in 40 years. <laughs> well, why not? What's in it? Oh, nothing much. A little Applejack. Tequila, some gin, a little brandy, uh, plus a dash of bitters. Bitters? What are they for? Uh, confidentially, to kill the taste. Well, I don't care. I'm going to show you, Mr. Duke Hudkins. I don't care. I, I want a second... Uh, a second... Well, what are you waiting for, Duke? Why don't you pick her up? <laughs> Coming to, Duke? I don't know, Waco. What time is it? Uh, five to four. Five to... Well, she's only got five minutes left to make a bus. <laughs> Molly? Molly? Oh, oh. How do you feel, Molly? How would anyone feel with three heads? Confused. <laughs> and none of my heads like each other. And I don't like you. And what time is it? Uh, nearly four. Pick me up. Thanks, pal. Oh, hold that floor still. It's rocking. You better hold on to me. Not even if there were an earthquake. I've got to get to my bus. Where's the door? Right here. Come on, Waco. They're coming. We can just about make it, Molly. Watch for the door. We can get you down to the bus station about ten seconds flat. There comes my bus. There goes my bus. You should have let Duke ride you over. I should have shot Duke the first time I saw him. Now, don't get upset. There'll be another bus along. How often do they come through, Waco? Every two days. Every two... <laughs> that means I'm going to miss the wedding. Whose wedding? Yours? No, I'm not the one who's getting married. My mother is. Your mother? Hmm. Well, ma'am, I reckon it's about time she got married, considering... <laughs> Oh, don't be a fool. She isn't marrying my father. She ain't. <laughs> no, this is Mother's fourth marriage. Her fourth? <laughs> Enterprising, ain't she? Just goes to show how many men are plain dumb. I beg your pardon. Oh, I ain't meaning nothing against your mom, Molly, but I don't hold with no man's marrying. I don't care what you hold with. I'll have to stay here for two days and... Oh, I could kill you. 
Where's a hotel? Yeah, we just left the only one in town. The last chance? Mm-hmm. You call that a cactus milk barn a hotel? Yep, only one we got. Well, well, if that's the only place there is. There's only one trouble, Molly. On account of the rodeo being in town, there ain't no vacant rooms. Oh. Oh. But, uh, well, I figure on account of I was kind of responsible for your missing your bus, uh, Waco and me will be glad to let you have our room. You what? I mean, uh, me and Waco will sleep in the barn. Oh. Well, all right. I'll go on ahead and get our gear out of the room. Waco, take care of money real nice. Yeah. Hmm, dear, thoughtful boy. Well, now, don't be too hard on them, Molly. You see, the gals have kind of spoiled them. They all fall for them and, and uh, well, feeling the way he does about marrying... That uh, man needs a lesson. I thought it was a riding lesson, but... So, Mr. Duke Hudkins has never proposed to a girl in his life? Nope, and never will. Would you like to make a little bet on that? What? You don't mean you're thinking of trying to get him to propose to you? That is exactly what I mean. Oh, 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 shit. And furthermore, (laughs) when I turn him down, perhaps Mr. Duke Hudkins will realize he isn't quite as cute or irresistible as he thinks. Yes, well, uh, now look here, Molly. Uh, I see what you mean, but honest, you, you ain't got a chance, honey. Even pretty girls ain't been able to... Mr. Waco, I can do my hair quite differently. Hmm? I've got a dress in my suitcase that knows just what to do when I put it on, and... Well, uh... <laughs> how about them uh, glasses you're wearing? Those? Yeah. Mr. Waco, while it may be true that men seldom make passes at girls who wear glasses, remember, a girl can always take her glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shay, I ain't never expected to see Duke, the woman hater, sitting on a hotel front porch waiting for no gal. Shut up. <laughs> oh, Shay. <laughs> Will you stop that cackling and quit that there rocking? <laughs> okay, okay, but you know, Duke, you didn't have no right making that gal, Mr. Bush. Hey. Huh? Where did she come from? Who? Well, that gal coming down the stairs. Hmm? Well, the only girl upstairs was Molly. So I guess it's got to be Molly coming down. Molly? Yes. But this girl is... Look at them. Look at those. <laughs> look at her. Yes, yeah, was I to look any harder, I'd bust an eyeball, Duke. Uh, oh, by the way, Waco. Yeah? I just remembered, ain't that pieball mayor yours lonely? What? You'd better get right on down to the stables. I'll take care of Molly by myself. Well, now, that's downright big of you, do. Mm-hmm. But Waco making her miss her bus was my fault, so it's up to me to suffer. Well, Duke, if uh, feeding Molly's suffering, I want to suffer. <laughs> you get out of here, Waco. I'll break your darn neck. Here I am, Molly. Here I am. Yep, there he is, and here I am. Just a, just a lady horse's companion. That was a very nice dinner, Duke I'm sure glad you liked it, Molly It's very beautiful out here in the desert In the moonlight Ain't it, though? Just full of of sand and sand and... And cactuses? Oh, I'm mighty sorry about that there cactus milk, Molly. I... I'm not. You're not? No. If I hadn't drunk it, I wouldn't be here. You know, you're real pretty, Molly. Thank you, Duke. Yep, and uh, you're real pretty. And looking at you in the moonlight, Molly, I got a feeling... Well, I got a feeling I ain't had since my pop bought me my first horse. Why, Duke, that's the nicest thing anyone ever said to me. Uh, I ain't one for talking, so... Gosh. Mm. You ain't one for talking much either. I, uh, let's just do that some more. All right. I, uh, I, uh... uh, 
I, uh... Just let's, uh... Duke. Yes, Molly? I like this a lot. But Mother has always been sort of a shining example to me. But, Molly, you sure don't want to get married no four times, do you? No, Duke. Just once will be enough. Molly, I ain't the marrying kind. I am. Now, look, why don't we just forget about this marrying talk and go on like we were before? Uh Uh-uh, Duke. I'm like my mother. I play for keeps. I... I hate women. I'm going back to my house. Good night. Good night, Duke. Pleasant dreams. But, Duke, somehow I don't think you're going to be very happy with your horse tonight. (laughs) During this intermission, Bob Williams will deliver a short lecture on how to play bridge. Fine. Now, suppose you have an excellent hand, and there's a fellow standing behind your chair. Well, every time you make a move, this fellow says, "Uh uh-uh, I wouldn't play that card. Now, your natural reaction would be to get up and throw this heel out the window. But the real bridge expert just smiles and says to himself, Why be irritated? Light on old gold. Precisely. And why? Because, smokers, you deal yourself a grand slam in real pleasure when you get the swell extra flavor of an old gold, plus its special protection against cigarette dryness. You see, old gold's blend of great tobaccos, including a touch of tasty Latakia tobacco, is conditioned with apple honey to help retain natural moisture, to help prevent cigarette dryness. So for a better, keener, tastier smoke... Light an old gold. But remember, we're producing all the cigarettes possible without sacrificing old gold quality. And while our armed forces get first consideration, we're doing our best to assure fair distribution of remaining old golds. So if you must be content with substitute brands today, be content to know that tomorrow, if you ask, your dealer may have old golds. <laughs> And now back to Harold Lloyd and the third act of tonight's Old Gold Comedy Theater presentation, A Lady Takes a Chance, starring Randolph Scott and Gene Tierney. All right, Mr. Lloyd. So the Duke has gone back to the barn to sleep with his horse and Waco. Yes, but somehow uh, sleep has eluded him. Molly, having struck what she thinks is a telling blow at a woman hater, is sleeping soundly. Suddenly, some pebbles begin tinkling at her window. What was that? Good grief, it's raining pebbles. Molly, Molly. Uh-huh, do calling. Who is it? It's me, Molly, down here. I, uh, I hope I didn't waken you. That was the idea, wasn't it? <laughs> Molly, I, I ain't been able to sleep. Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't have any sleeping pills. No, it ain't that, Molly. I've been thinking, and... and Molly, will you marry me? This is so sudden. I've been thinking, and I love you. Molly, will you marry me? Huh? Well, I... (laughs) I don't much like the idea of being proposed to from a distance, Duke. You see that ladder over there? Why don't you go prop it up against my window and climb up? Then we can talk this over a little more quietly. Why, sure, Molly. I got it. Watch out. Better hold on to it, Molly. I will. You can climb up now. Here I come. Not too fast now. The slightest push and the lateral will go over. I don't care. Oh, Molly, I, I love you. Do you? I sure do, and I want to marry you. Will you marry me, Molly? But I thought you were never going to get married. That was before I met you, Molly. I guess I was kind of stuck up, but I learned better. Yes, you have. The only thing is, your lesson isn't quite finished. Lean over here and kiss me. Will you, Duke? You holding on to that ladder? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Now, how about that kiss? So you want to marry me. But, Duke... Whatever made you think I might want to marry you? Hmm? But, Molly, you... No, Duke. 
If you hadn't been such a conceited person, you might not have been bad at all. But under the circumstances, Duke, I think you're due for a fall. Hey, watch out for that ladder. Hey, you're pushing it over. You're... Hey! Oh! Go away, Duke. It ain't Duke. It's me, Molly. Wake up. Oh, come in. What do you want? Hey, you threw Duke over, Molly. He deserved it. Oh, he took it powerful hard. Molly, I tell you, that boy loves you. Does he? Yes. That's too bad. I, well, maybe I might have liked him, but it's no use. No, I reckon not. That's what I thought. But, Molly, look, when you push that ladder over, you not only hurt Duke's feelings, he took a bad fall. He, he's hurt? Oh, where? I've got to go right down to him. Yeah, well, uh, now watch them stairs. Oh, he was able to get up and stagger off, Molly, but he's hurt real bad. What what happened to him? Well, he just about managed to climb onto Sammy, and then he galloped off into the desert. Into the desert? Yes. I guess his bones will be whitening out on them desert sands in years to come. Waco, where's your horse? Why, right here, but... Uh... Oh, help me on. Please, Waco. All right. There you are, but... You're on, but I, I thought you didn't like horses. Please, Waco, which way did he go? He went that away, Molly. <laughs> Giddy up, you horse, you. Giddy up. Duke! Duke! Oh, there you are. Duke! Wait! Duke, it's Molly. Wait for me. Come on, you darn horse. Shift into high or something. <laughs> Duke! Stop! Duke! Duke! You fell off. Where are the brakes of this horse anyway? Stop, please, horse. Stop. Ooh. Duke, say you're not dead. Oh, darling, please say you're not dead. No, I don't reckon I am. Oh, Molly. Duke. Oh, Duke, I love you so much. Me too, Molly. Duke, are you hurt? Yeah, only my heart hurts a little, Molly, but I kind of like it. Mm. Mm. Oh, darling. That's the second time you fell off your horse. You really are a bad rider, aren't you? Wasn't that at all. Sam is just jealous. <laughs> so that's what happens when a lady takes a chance. And a very good idea it turned out to be, Gene. By the way, you and Randy will have to give me the recipe for that cactus milk. I thought you might be asking for that, Harold, so I'll have to give you a bottle of it. Uh, well, all right, Wendy, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> but, uh, and I also want to say that Old Gold thanks you both for a very splendid performance. What's on the Old Gold playbill next week, Harold? Well, uh, let's see, I think it's a very wonderful show, Gene. In fact, a scoop for the Old Gold Comedy Theater, because we are going to present a new, unreleased Edward Small production Brewster's Millions, with the original cast, Dennis O'Keefe, Helen Walker, and Misha Auer. We'll, we'll be, be listening. listening. Good night, folks, until next Sunday. See you then. A Lady Takes a Chance was presented through the courtesy of Frank Ross, producer of the forthcoming Picture of the Wolf, based on the Lloyd T. Douglas bestseller. Randolph Scott will soon be seen starring in the RKO production, China Sky. Gene Tierney can soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox 30th Anniversary production, A Bell for the Donald. Bob Williams saying goodnight for old gold. This is the National Broadcasting Company.